Good morning, family and friends. Welcome here. On behalf of the Kingsthorpe Methodist Church and indeed the whole Methodist circuit in Northampton, our deepest sympathies. Unfortunately, I could not be here when Bronwyn passed away and it saddened me that I couldn't be here. And so in a sense today, while we remember Philip, I also think of Bron. And I pray that God will hold you as a family in the hollow of his hand. A word of gratitude also to the 30 people who stood outside Find and Wesleyan Independent Church this morning as the coffin passed there. Can I just remind you, I hate doing this, but can I remind you that we need to be maintaining social distancing while here and also that um, we must wear our masks at all times and that no singing is allowed while we gather. So even though we have hymns on the program, we will be listening to those hymns and not singing them. So friends, as we meet together, both here and watching on the web, we are in the presence of the God who walks with us through all the changing scenes of life. We have come together as family and friends to celebrate the life of someone who was loved dearly and to share our grief at his death. We are here to remember and say thank you for the life of our brother Philip, to commend him to God's loving care and to pray for those who mourn. We remember the words of Jesus which open our service. I am the resurrection and the life they who believe in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose love is everlasting, 
you can turn the shadow of death into the light of morning. As we remember Philip today, speak to us your gracious promise that we may be lifted above our distress into the light and peace of your presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And friends, we listen to uh, the hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. in the presence of death Christ offers us sure ground for hope and confidence and even for joy let us hear the words of holy scripture that from them we may draw strength and comfort a reading from Psalm 91 we read verses 1 through 16 Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your wall of defense. 
you will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent because he loves me says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The gospel reading is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. It's where Jesus comforts his disciples. And so Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And so Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And then Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do not you do know him, and you have seen him. Amen. Friends, someone once said to me when I was grieving the death of my own mother, she died when she was just 43, and uh, I remember these words spoken to me, um, and in my mother tongue and it lives in my heart and it is true now as it was then. I do not know who this is attributed to, but I want to say this to you too. Remember, life brings tears, smiles and memories. The tears dry, the smiles fade but the memories, they last forever. The tears dry, the smiles fade, but the memories, they last forever. Let's take a moment as we remember Philip now. Now I've got to apologize at the onset as somebody who speaks many languages and English is not even the third one. I struggle with English names uh, and I usually try uh, quite a bit before the time to just get the pronunciation right. So apologies. 
um, if, if there are any issues here now. Let's remember Philip. Philip was born on the 4th of April, 1923, to Florence, the daughter of John Cooper Baggett and John, better known as Jack, Sibley, in the small hospital in Ampt Hill, beds. He was followed by his two, young, his two younger brothers, Jeff and Clifford. The family lived in the village of Greenfield until 1929 when they moved to Oni because of Jack's work managing the mill there. Jack passed away when Philip was only 10 years old. He was then taken in by one of Jack's many sisters who he often spoke of dearly. Philip's father was a Freemason. He was granted a place at the Royal Masonic School in Bushy near Watford. In January 1936, he transferred to the senior school, studying and passing the higher school certificate awarded Canonbury Gold Medal for Science. Upon leaving school, he worked in a sugar laboratory. He was offered a university place at Cambridge where he was offered to start his course and then continue his return from, from the army or wait and have his place held. Philip chose to hold his place. When he was called up to the army to serve for the Royal Corps of Signals, serving for five years in North Africa and Italy, where he hosted an army radio station playing classical music from around the world. During the time in the army, he used to exchange sweet tokens for the cigarette tokens. And this is where his sweet tooth came from as a lover of mintos and extra strong mints, something I shared with him. Sometimes as he settled for the evening and brushing his teeth, adamant that they helped him sleep. I wouldn't go as far as that, but I always have my mintos with me. On his return from the army, he found he had to join a waiting list for his university place. So he managed to get transferred to the education corps where he studied teaching. Philip then met Ruth Wilson through their links to their faith as Methodist Christians. They married on the 5th of August, 1948 at the Methodist church in Leighton Buzzard. After qualifying as a teacher, he started his career as a teacher at Woodford Halls. Philip and Ruth went on to have three daughters. Bronwyn was born on the 23rd of August, 1951. Christine, born on the 16th of February, 1954. And Barbara, born on the 26th of June, 1958. Living in their first home in Morton Pinckney, then Hartwell. Philip then taught at Road Secondary Modern as head of science and maths. And he was also the coach for the cricket team, um, which included, and now you must know I'm not English, David Capel, David Capel of England and Northants, serving as an active trade union rep for NASUWT for many years. By this time, the family had moved to Milton Mouser and Philip headed to exchange trips with a school in Kitzenanenogen in Germany. Now that's not an English name, is it? That's in Germany. To help restore some relationships after the war for many years. Now I speak German and it's funny that I couldn't uh, pronounce that. Lastly, for the remainder of his 40 years dedication as a teacher, he taught at the private school in Greens Norton. Philip had a great memory and remembered many students 
and was in contact with many pupils into their adulthood. In later years, from 1979, he became a doting and loving granddad to four grandchildren and then great granddad to six great grandchildren who he cared for dearly. Philip's retirement was spent um, in Finden where he joined the many groups linked to the church. He was a very proud family man who devoted his time to his family and did everything Ruth asked and he missed her dearly when, uh, when she went home to the Lord five years ago. Finally, he lived in the independent loving facilities in St. Christopher's Care Home. In the large study, he had books and the Guardian newspaper piled high. The children soon learned this was not to be used as a cut through to the kitchen. Once the children had left home, they often had students to stay whilst they were on their studies and they made friends with many who kept in touch regularly. Eventually, these rooms were filled with homemade, jam, with homemade wine and jam of all variations, which we all enjoyed, they say, some years after they had been produced. A devoted Methodist Christian, he served as a steward for two terms. He enjoyed his time at Kingsthorpe Methodist Church and the Findon Chapel and made many great friends who he kept in contact with. Virtual Sunday services on Sundays during the lockdown period allowed him to continue his faith. Philip was a keen sportsman, as we've heard, playing rugby for Banbury as a prop forward following Northerns and England cricket, the Saints and Eng England rugby. In the house in Milton Melsa, if he was not outside tending to his well-kept garden and nine pole allotment, he was teaching his ch grandchildren how to play cricket. He had a keen interest in chess and taught his grandchildren how to play and had chess boards and set pieces made and gave them as gifts for Christmas or birthdays. Philip was a great, a gentle and kind person who will be dearly missed by many. I will say something a little bit later on behalf of the church. And we listen now to, um, to his grandson, um, reading for us, remember me, and then after that, the eldest grandson, um, Grandpa kept a garden. Yeah, yeah, you can take that off. Yeah. Don't remember me with sadness. Don't remember me with tears. Remember all the laughter we've shared throughout the years. Now I am contented that my life, it was worthwhile. Knowing that I passed along the way, I made somebody smile. When you are walking down the street and you've got me on your mind, I'm walking in your footsteps, only half a step behind. So please don't be unhappy just because I'm out of sight. Remember that I'm with you each morning, noon and night. Grandpa kept a garden. Our grandpa kept a garden, a garden of the heart. He planted all the good things that gave our lives their start. He turned us to the sunshine and encouraged us a dream, fostering and nurturing the seeds of self-esteem. And then the winds and rain came. He protected us enough, but not too much because he knew we would stand up strong and tough. His constant good example always taught us right from wrong, markers for our pathway that will last a lifetime long. We are our grandpa's garden. We are his legacy. Thank you, grandpa. We love you. We remember him and those values that he taught us 
will forever live in our hearts, in the way we treat others, in the things we do. We listen again to this beautiful hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, as we thank God for his life. Listen to Julia and uh, Stephanie, um, both are doing poems. He is gone. You can shed tears that he is gone, or you can smile because he has lived. Close your eyes and pray that he will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that he has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see him, or it can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live for yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him and only that he is gone, or you can cherish his memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what he would want, smile, open your eyes, love and go on.
born to be a rainstorm, to send your voice throughout the night, to sing your song with falling raindrops, to make the darkness with your light. You were born to show rare beauty, to wash the dirt out of their eyes, but the whole world ran for cover when you opened up your skies. So you made your thunder silent and you learned to bite your rainy tongue. You gave them what they want, what they, what you thought they wanted. You gave them life with no endless, with endless sun. But as they watched their lives grow weaker, watched as their leaves turned brown and dry, they wished they didn't take for granted your booming presence in the sky. You were born to be a rainstorm, to be chaotic and bold, to show there's beauty in your knowledge that you cannot, that cannot be controlled because you might think you're not needed. Life without you is the same, but nothing beautiful would ever grow if it wasn't washed by rain. Thank you, Julia and Stephanie, for those profound um, poems. I have a favorite poet. Her name is Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou once said, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I just want to repeat that again. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I stand here today to pay tribute because I will never forget how Philip made me feel. Some of you may have heard this before, but I say this again. As an immigrant and someone with an accent, one is not always treated kindly. But Philip, and I want to include Bronwyn in that as well. Philip and Bronwyn made me feel human. They treated me with such compassion such kindness and such respect. I felt valued in their presence. Their broad smiles often lifted my spirit and their encouragement always energized me to continue to do what God has called me to do. I want to say to you today, Philip, rest in peace, my brother. I will never forget how you made me feel. Can I ask you to stand? Father, we thank you for Philip's life. We thank you for all that he meant to his family, for his influence, and for all the special memories held. And we take a moment in silence to remember him. So into your keeping, O merciful God, we commend your servant, Philip. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, 
into the joy of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. We bring our prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour. Amen. The Lord bless us, the Lord keep us, the Lord makes his face to shine upon us, the Lord is gracious unto us, and the Lord gives us his peace. Let us go in peace to love and to serve him. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen. Please be seated, friends.